This video is going to be an overview of the Ravens' third possession where, where they really changed the dynamic of the first half of this football game. To, the, to this point, both teams had forced – both teams' defenses had por- forced two punts. I thought the Seahawks' defense on the first and second possession looked really fast, multiple. They hadn't brought a ton of pressure. And, and as you'll see on the first play of this possession, they really interesting use of three-man rushes. I thought they had – done it once early on, and then they do on the first play of this third possession. The Ravens really flipped the switch, if you ask me. We had run option prior to this drive. Perhaps Munkin changed the type of option game plays he was running. Uh, you'll see one usage of it out of 11 personnel, one out of 20 personnel. Uh, as an aside, I am going to continue to classify Ricard as a fullback because in our database, we want to know the times when Ricard is on the field with three wide receivers and a running back as compared to Andrews or likely on the field as the only tight end. I see no reason to classify Ricard as a tight end and have uh, data that is askew or inaccurate in terms of run pass, directional run pass, and concepts that are being run by Todd Munkin when Ricard is on the field because they're drastically different. So 20 personnel is what I'm going to continue to refer to when Ricard is on the field with one other running back and three wide receivers. It doesn't make any sense at all to me to refer to him as a tight end. So, um, you know, be that as it may, you may have a different opinion. Certainly other people do on social media. I've heard people talk about our 11 personnel run game is tearing people up, and I suspect that some of those situations should actually be classified as 20. But I digress. Let's get to the film. We're going to look at every single play. This is the first one from the negative 19-yard line. And I think Seattle's dropping out three intentionally here on this pass play. It's a play action. Andrew's running the over concept. Lamar ends up scrambling for four. And got to give Seattle credit. They took something from what Arizona did the week before. And what they're trying to do is get people either A, in passing lanes, or B, give Lamar a difficult read when when no one is open because you got people, you know, maybe matching coverages. And then underneath, this is a great job by the linebacker running underneath of Andrew's route. You almost have this kind of like three-level coverage that Arizona ended up with at least three times the week before. So so deeper coverage, perhaps man call, whatever. Underneath coverage, second level. And then first level guys dropping out. I'm not saying that that's necessarily the design of the coverage because certainly that's not the fundamental way to cover cover the pass. But sometimes... Perhaps it's it's one of the best things to do against an athlete of this caliber is have a couple of guys who aren't rushing but are able to kind of like hedge between being in passing lanes and or respond when Lamar scrambles just like that guy did right there. It's an interesting concept to me and one that maybe teams are doing intentionally. I feel like Seattle did it once on the first two possessions when we really couldn't get anything going. The option game wasn't working. I thought Lamar missed OBJ on the throw on perhaps the second possession. And then Seattle pulls it out on the first play of the third possession here. Interesting to me, I'd like to take a look at more of the the instances of it from the last two games. So very next play, 12 personnel. You got Likely and Andrews down here together into the boundary, which is really cool if you ask me because you got OBJ and Flowers up to the top. Tariq Woolen on a corner blitz from the boundary. Not picked up, but we've got a, a stunting guy you know, over top of Stanley for him to deal with right here. So he can't block two guys. As it stands, this inside linebacker widens up, likely kind of sits it down right between the hash and the top of the numbers. Lamar finds it quickly and brilliantly, 16 yards. I thought Isaiah likely played really well, particularly in the third and fourth quarter when we moved Andrews off the field some. I thought he looked quick. I thought he looked Really fresh legs, blocked well. It wasn't asked to do some of the the things that Andrews and Ricard were asked to do, but I think he looks really good. The numbers of targets aren't there. Maybe the numbers of snaps aren't there, but he looks like a guy to me who, God forbid we had to play a game without Andrews, could fill in and give us five or six catches. All right. After that 16-yard gain, first and 10, we go to 20 personnel, so likely and Andrews come off the field. Ricard and Aguilar go on. And this is the entire reason why I'm referring to it as 20 personnel, because I think Todd Munkin is using 20 personnel to run the football against nickel defenses, teams that are inserting a fifth DB into the game, 
when we have three wide receivers, which you kind of have to, and then we're getting, some people will call them lighter boxes. Jamal Adams is still walked up in the box, a, a, a seven-man front. But give us credit for what we're doing. Ricard kicking out the end. Macari has dug out Bobby Wagner. I think Bobby Wagner is a savant at block destruction and utilizing you know low pad level hand moves, rips, and swipes to get around or underneath the, of defenders. I didn't think he did a great job of that on Sunday, and I think he's a Hall of Fame player. This is Macari digging him out. Ricard kicking out the edge defender. It's a same side run designed to cut it back to the same side that Justice Hill lined up. <clears throat> Creates a, a second and six. Same personnel group on the field, so we're going hurry up. Ineffective because I think Ricard, I think it's Ricard loses on the front side up there. Now he is lined up as a tight end, but it's still 20 personnel. The personnel doesn't change however you have them lined up. Ricard could line up at receiver. It's still 20 personnel, which is the reason why I want to keep it 20 personnel in our database so we get accurate data. It's a counter concept, correct read by Lamar if he's reading 57, which I think he is. It's a give read. Ends up being loss of two. Creates a, oh, here's the uh, end zone angle, by the way. I think these two have just made a call for a, a scrape exchange where he's going to pinch down inside. So Ricard's going to try to take him down. And then Wagner's going to fold over the top. They're on the front side of the run play, so they're not part of the read. Lamar's reading this guy right here. But it's still the same concept. Wagner folds over the top. 58 pinches inside, wins against Ricard because Ricard wasn't expecting it. Tackle for loss. Ricard comes off. Andrews comes on. That's 11 personnel. And this is complete. OBJ up top. He's in the slot. But this is just a pick by Bateman. Bateman doesn't actually touch Witherspoon. It's the guy guarding Bateman, Trey Brown, who runs into him. But that's the design of the play is for Bateman to pick him. I thought there was going to be an opportunity this week for the snag and go. <clears throat> but in any case, Lamar's quickly found OBJ out in the flats, nine yards wide open, really nothing Witherspoon could do against that pick concept. First down, gets us rolling. First and 10, going to the backside. It's a nice job by Trey Brown of covering this. Clearly the ball was overthrown. Even if it's thrown on target, Trey Brown's in position to potentially make a play on the ball or make it. It's not going to be an easy catch for Bateman. Let's do it that way. But Sorry, but I do like that it's the backside of trips and the backside safety. Look at the backside safety, Adams. He's the boundary. He's looking right at three from the field, Andrews. So we're going to have to do this. We got to attack up there some. I thought we did the week before against Arizona, even though I don't believe we hit either of them. We got to keep taking those shots, if you ask me. All right, so that's the same personnel group that was on the field. The play before in 11 personnel, I do like that, that we're kind of keeping guys on. And you can see they've stayed on the field here in terms of the receivers and the tight ends. 11 personnel, second and 10. And this is a cool motion that we're using and route to Andrews. And I want to link it to something we did later on in the game. Andrews lined up to the boundary with Zay. He's motioning down and then running across. I do think it's a really nice job by Brooks the inside linebacker, to cover this and hold him to a nine-yard gain. It's a long way to run. But think of the real long run that Keaton Mitchell had, the 60-yarder. And I'll show that in a video that I've already recorded, but probably won't be up till Tuesday uh, morning, where we do the same side toss or same side pitch. Keaton Mitchell runs out of there. We pitch it to him. And the tight end, who was likely had motion down and pinned the defensive end. So we're giving a similar look on a pass play, this play, to Andrews, and the pin-pull pitch. Now, actually, on the pin-pull pitch, likely motioned further down. I think Munkin's got to maybe make the motions look the same so there's no giveaway on the plays. But one thing he has done is he's added plays to different formations or motion looks every week to make it more difficult for defenses to kind of predict what's coming. You can see Andrews is open. I think Lamar waited to throw the football because he was worried about Wagner and maybe this D-tackle. I, I feel like Lamar is exceptional at seeing things in front of him, defensive linemen, pressure, et cetera, and knowing I can't throw the ball here. I've got to sidearm this thing. I've got to throw it over the top or whatever. So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here. I think he's looking for 
a lane to throw this to, and maybe you'd like this ball to be thrown a little earlier, but I think he believes there's someone in the window, so it creates a third and one. And again, it's 11 personnel, so we go hurry up, we keep those guys on the field, and it's an option read where we isolate Boye and Mafe. There's really nothing he can do. I like that we're using Aguilar. This is the same exact play we ran against Tennessee in a third and two in, in England. He's going to arc release out to go get the boundary side safety. It was Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams basically stonewalls him. Play side tackle is able to work up to the linebacker here. Even if they scrape exchange it, it's a third and one. We're still going to get the first down. The only way to stop us from getting a thir the first down here is to run Boye Mafe down the line of scrimmage and force a keep read. But if you do that, then you open yourself up for an even bigger run with Lamar. So this is the read man. He's going to kind of step up field. Play side tackle works up to Brooks. Mafe's athletic enough that he's able to limit this to a five-yard gain. But it's a productive play for us. Look at the wall that we're creating with these three guys here. Basically, we're going to get Bobby Wagner caught up in the trash. Mafe tackles him five-yard gain. I thought the, it was a poor spot there. It ends up being a six-yard. I thought it was a six-yard gain. It goes down as a five-yard gain. And last play of the first quarter. First play of the second quarter. We switch personnel groups now. 20 personnel. Receiver stayed on the field. Ricard replaces Andrews. Same exact play. To our right this time, and we motion Aguilar across. Brilliant design. You got the arc release by Ricard. You got Aguilar in motion to go get. 20, Julian Love, and we're going to isolate this defensive end. So Ricard is going to arc release around, go get the front side inside backer. Aguilar, who went in motion, is going to go seal off 20 and kind of try to wall him out that way. And Lamar is going to fit in that running lane between them because in this case, instead of what Mafe did, kind of half man it and Lamar give it, now this guy's stepping down, which he, quote, should do. The problem for the Seahawks is... We're ready for the gap exchange. Ricard is going to get the front side inside linebacker, and there is literally nobody there in that lane. Nine yards, ten yards by Lamar. Same area of the field, I feel like, where the option kind of lit up the Lions two weeks ago at home. And, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was midfield, but I felt like there was a couple of option keepers by Lamar in this area, maybe even closer to the red zone, that gave the Lions trouble. I wish I had enough time to create like a, a football field overlay for you guys and show you personnel groups and plays, kind of the way coaches would would break it down to, to look at a team like, hey, what personnel groups are they using? What plays are they? I know a guy who, he's a college defense coordinator. I know a guy who has that overlay with him on game day, and that's how he calls his defensive plays. Oh, it's 20 personnel, second and eight from the negative 42. It's this play. He calls his defense, and he's right most of the time. That's why he's great at his job. In any case, that's the end zone view of that same play, 10 yards for Lamar. First and 10, 22-yard line, so 12 personnel now. Ricard came off. Aguilar came off. Andrews and Likely come on the field. Snag flat. Lamar gets to the third read, which is Andrews wide open in the middle of the field. I like that we're doing this with Likely. This used to be a, a wide receiver thing, so it's, it's pro slot. Likely across the field into the flats. Flowers, the little snag, that's his route. Andrews sitting down in the middle of the field. Wagner does a nice job of covering the snag. But look at what this does. All three guys, all three eligible receivers to that side, running short routes. It basically removes this safety from the equation. They can't be right because they brought a blitzer. I think it was Jamal Adams. Easy nine yards over the middle because Lamar's processing it quick. He's really good at snag flat. A lot of quarterbacks are, but he's also really good at finding Mark Andrews. Hurry up again, second and one. Talked about this during the um, old guard video that I put out last night, or, or earlier Tuesday night, I should say, on OBJ and Andrews. So we keep these guys on the field. We get up to the line quick. It's second and one. That's what Munkin does. He goes unbalanced. We've been running to the unbalanced side for weeks. We've been doing this since week one. J.K. Dobbins' first touchdown run against Houston was on an unbalanced pin pull pitch. Week two against the Bengals. Three of our conversions were out of unbalanced or heavy personnel with Falele as the sixth offensive lineman. This case, it's a dual read option. Lamar and Andrews are reading Boye Mafe. 
My face steps down because remember the last time he was a read man, he stepped up and Lamar gave it and we converted it. Well, now it's a second and one. He doesn't want to give up the first down. The problem is Andrews is reading him as well. Andrews loops around to go get Tariq Woolen, who does a nice job on the block destruction. Woolen gets his hands on the inside of Andrews, and basically controls him. <clears throat> it's still a nine-yard gain for Lamar, don't get me wrong. But that's because of the design of the play. I thought Tariq Woolen did a nice job on this play, stringing it out and holding Lamar to a nine-yard gain when really it could have easily been a touchdown. I'll give you one more view of it from the All-22. So we got two-on-two, two, Woolen and Brooks against Andrews and Lamar. Brooks didn't gap exchange it, which is what the Seahawks had done a lot of prior to this week. Same play, end zone angle. You can see the unbalanced nature of it. Zeitler, Makari, Stanley. Ricard is eligible back here. The gap exchange, Mafe stepping down to force the keep read. And it, it would have been Brooks on a distinct path, scrape exchanging it to go get Lamar. And then the corner being the, quote, pitch man, even though there is no pitch man, it's not a triple option, it's a double option. But you can see Brooks is not scrape exchanging it. He actually goes a couple steps further, and, it, and he's even with Lamar. That's too late for Lamar. Even though Woolen does a nice job, Brooks is not able to impact the play at all other than being on the inside and preventing a cutback when he should have been pretty much near about a yard, yard and a half from Lamar right now if he was anticipating the option. That's what makes defending this Ravens defense – this Ravens offense so tough for defenses is that they don't know when the option's coming. And, and that's what gives Todd Munkin more choices, <clears throat> more options than most offensive coordinators have in the NFL. Very next play, this one shocked me. We go 22 personnel, Andrews, Kolar, Ricard, and then Gus, I mean, you know who's getting the football here. And we're untouched until the goal line. That is poor defense, no matter how you cut it. Uh, Seattle prides himself on playing better defense than that. Jamal Adams getting up the field. I'm not sure why. No one touches him until the goal line when Diggs, who makes a great effort, you know, tries to flip him. So let's talk about what happens here. 52 is going to stem inside. Wagner is going to fold outside, kind of similar to the gap exchange I'm talking about. Kolar is trying to get up to Wagner, and then Ricard and Makari do a really nice job on 52. I think that's Hall from Auburn. They do a really nice job comboing him up. Ricard's going to work up to Brooks, 56. I mean, excuse me, Makari's going to work up to Brooks, 56. Ricard's going to stay on. I think that's Hall. And you can see a huge running lane open. Kolar really doesn't get a piece of Wagner there. Wagner's kind of like a pre-planned scrape outside on flow to him. Opens the floodgates. Really cool moment. I mean, for us to run option, great. You know, we, we can kind of out-scheme people for stuff like that, especially when you, if you're in a too high safety alignment. Just the numbers just don't work for you defensively. But when we're able to get down there to the four, we put Gus in the game, Lamar under center, here we go. And we're able or untouched to the goal line. That for me was illustrative of the fact that things had changed drastically and changed very quickly. We wasted the fourth possession. I won't digress there again. And then the fifth possession, we go right downfield. We did convert, I think, two third downs, make it 14 to nothing for all intents and purposes with the way our defense was playing. Game was really over at that point. I did a video about the defense. Early Tuesday night, one of my favorite videos to do throughout the season because we were dominant for four quarters. There was no let up in that defense at all. We made everyone made plays at all three levels. The coverage was exquisite, you know, especially in the deep, the secondary, the DBs, the corners, and safeties. If you guys get a chance, check that video out. It was one of my favorite ones to produce, particularly this week. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comment section. Please consider commenting once the video posts up. And if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this one, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.